Welcome, Ellis and Trigo County Farm Bureau. This is Stephanie, and it's Ag in the Classroom once again, and we're on another great tour. So today we are at the uh, at Call Hall at Kansas State University, and we are at the ice cream slash milk slash cheese making plant here on campus. And uh, today we are making cheese with Jared Parsons. He is the manager of the plant. He's the master cheese maker. And we are making some white cheddar today. Um, it's in July, and so this is the time of the year that they make the cheese for the Christmas season. So this is a hard cheese, so it will have to set for, I think he said six to 12 months, so that it'll be good and sharp for the Christmas season. So uh, follow me today as we go into the plant and we learn how to make hard uh, cheddar cheese. Uh, uh, a, cheddar, a batch of cheddar cheese is gonna be a, uh, a white cheddar. We only make one batch of white cheddar a year oh. uh, and, it's, and it's in July, normally the beginning of July. Um, and, it, and then we sell it at Christmas time as a K-State Select. Okay, gotcha. After Christmas, it's old enough that it'll be uh, um, a sharper cheddar and, and yellow, or excuse me, white cheddars that are, are sharp are called New York Sharps. Okay. So New York Sharp Cheddar is a white cheddar. So when this, when this uh, gets past uh, the Christmas season and, and getting towards next summer, we'll, we'll call it K, uh, New York Sharp. Okay. So, Great. Uh, cheeses are on, on cheddars, uh, depending on their age, is, ha is uh, their, their uh, title for how sharp they are. You got mild cheddar that's three to six months old. Okay. Uh, that's how long we age the, age the blocks of cheese. And then uh, medium cheddar here at K-State, we call it six to 12 months old. So if we make a batch and we take a block out at, at six months old, we call them a medium cheddar. Sharp would be 12 to 18 months old. And uh, extra sharp is anything over a year and a half old. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. So, like I said, we're making a batch of white cheddar here. It started with 5,100 pounds of milk. Uh, you can divide that number by 8.6 to get your gallons. Okay. It'll come up just short of 600 gallons of milk. And uh, Tony, Tony started the pasteurizer this morning at 445. We finished pumping it in at 645. The temperature on the milk was 67 degrees. It was not homogenized, but it is pasteurized. So okay. I add, I, I heat it up to 88 degrees with the jacket. That's optimal temperature for the uh, the culture to grow. I add the uh, starter culture to it, uh, to, the, to the milk. The starter culture works in the milk for about a half hour, and the starter culture starts to br uh, break down and digest the lactose and secrete, secrete lactic acid. All right? Um, so that's that gives cheese the the cheese taste, the, the bacteria the in it. Taste. The, the nice, yummy, the, the yummy taste. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, <laughs> so the, the uh, uh, culture's already been added. And then, like I said, a half hour later at, at uh, uh, you know, basically eight o'clock, we, we add the rennet. Okay. That rennet will coagulate that milk. I see that. Right, well, yeah. right. And so it'll coagulate it, it turns it into a solid block of, of, uh, of jello if you will or, or pudding it's more right. like a pudding than right. it is a jello and then we'll take those har those knives on that wall those are called knives you guys might call them harps we'll drag them through the mass of, of coagulated milk and then we will um, switch the knives around and then back drag it so basically we're cutting it into cubes yeah um, which would be what we're uh, what we got here is starting to, you know, stick back together, but right. you can tell it's got a, you know, it was cut at one point. So, oh, yeah. Um, so, what so, yeah. Is that at now? so what we're doing now is we're at the cooking stage. The cooking, the cooking stage is uh, very crucial. This is where we're uh, uh, heating the curd up from 88 degrees to 102. All right. And we want to go low and slow. Uh, if we, if we go too fast and heat it up too fast, it'll, It'll form a shell on that curd, and it won't uh, expel the moisture. Okay. In which case, you'll have you'll have more you'll have more cheese, but it'll be high moisture cheese. In which case, it it, it, it doesn't it, last as long that right, way, right? That's right. right. A higher moisture cheese, you can't age it out as long. So, okay. breaking it up now. Just stirring the corners, making sure this is a brand new vat, guys. Oh, We've God. only used this thing twice, so. Uh, You know, 
with the other one, you know, exa you knew exactly what to expect. It was a square, square corner bat, and. Uh, so how long did you have this bat then? Well, we had it installed in January or something, but okay. we've only made, like I said, two batches of cheese through it. But uh, but uh, it's a it's a really nice bat. Um, uh, one a month, you know, up in that bung hole. And, uh, so periodically I got to take the curd out of the bung hole to put it back into the uh, rotation. Okay, so right now, uh, we are draining the whey off of the cheese curds. And you can see those nice, uh, yummy cheese curds there. They're going to be kind of rubbery right now, and if you follow down here, you can see the whey coming out of the bottom of the vat. They've got a strainer that's catching any of the extra curds there. They've also got a strainer here at the end to stop the curds from going down the drain as well. Started out this morning, we um, pasteurized about 600 pounds of milk, poured it into our vat, heating it to 88 degrees um, starting I should say at 88 degrees going up to 102 uh, this process of pasteurizing getting everything ready and um, getting to this point is now at a um, several hours uh, they said Tony came in around 3 30 this morning to get the milk all prepped for this and uh, we're looking at it's 10 o'clock already um, at this point so after you get to this point from the 5,900 pounds of milk we're going to have right at 600 pounds or 10 percent of cheese curds before we start packing it and squeezing even more whey out of it okay so all the whey is pretty much out Correct. and Jared is now cutting the cheese and squaring it up so that we can start the cheddaring process. It's a giant knife, Jared. When you flip it the first time, it's really interesting where you start getting to see more whey because the whey sitting on top is not being pressed out. Only the whey on the bottom is being pressed out. So when you flip it the first time, there's a lot of whey coming out of this top stuff that is not noticeable before you flip it. And you, Jared said you'll flip this six times, Yep, right? yep. But the more we flip it, the less whey you'll see coming out because that's what's building the acidity. Oh, I see it there in the middle of the vat going down. So. Those look like they're heavy. They are. It couldn't possibly be because that's how we cut them at 12 Maybe. inches thick. <laughs> yeah. That one needs to be cut. They're right criticizing there. your cutting. It's all right. He deserves it. Yeah, he definitely deserves it. There was a reason that I said, hey! Cut them all, Bill. Cut them all. When you were cutting them, I was like, go low. Okay, so now Jared and Phil are taking the curd patties and they are running them through the curd mill, he affectionately calls Betsy, and um, it's going to create more surface area so when they add the salt to the cheddar, it will do a better job of mixing within the cheese. Okay, so what are we doing now, Jared? We're going to add salt to this... Uh, milled curd and uh, what the salt will do is it'll give it uh, taste and uh, also uh, as a as a as a, pre as a preservation method it'll help give it give it the shelf life we we expect to have for cheddar curd all right
stir stick. Okay, we are getting to the end of this uh, process of getting ready to put it into the uh, Oops. hoops. And we're putting 45 pounds of curds in each hoop. And, or you also call it a cheese mold, right? Some people call it mold, yeah. Cheese, or a cheese mold. And um, they're going to, these molds or hoops are what they're going to use to press the rest of the whey out of the cheese. Um, firm it into a, a block. 40-pound block of cheese. 40 pound block of cheese. So you'll lose another five or six pounds of whey off of this, correct? Correct. Yeah. About 10% would be a good number. So 44 to 45 pounds. So they got a false floor. So you can pull the pans and those side walls will be able to slide down and compress. You see that? Oh wow, that's interesting. Okay, so we are putting the Hoops into the press. Putting the hoops in the press. Yeah. And uh, we're just going to stack them in here. And uh, we'll, put some, we'll put a hand crank on them. And then we'll turn the air on to them as well. So we'll show you guys that when we get them all shoved in. But it'll, it'll be a minute. Okay. here. So we've got the press loaded and he's now putting the squeeze on it. On. Go over that way, Ross. Take a look at this. We'll plug this in and, and uh, that, that bladder will come out of the... What do you think of that? There's the, there's the way coming out, Ross. So that's pushing with air, correct? Correct. So before I leave today, I'll, I'll undo it, open these up, and I'll stretch the the uh, cheesecloth again so that it's straight you know because it's, it's it's gonna it's gonna excrete pretty good amount right now right. but then like i said i will uh, repack them by stretching the cheesecloth and putting them back in there and then retightening the press perfect awesome. all right and that's that's, that's, cheese that's making. cheddar cheese in a nutshell there you so, go hope you guys uh learned something and enjoyed yourself today yeah thanks Jared. thank you well, here we are guys at the end of our cheese making video. I've had a great time today learning how to make white cheddar here at K-State. Big shout out to Jared, Tony, and Philby for showing us around, letting us help make cheese. We're gonna go into the cheese room here, wash up and help them, help them get this pa uh, cheese all finished packaging up. If you ate today, especially if you ate cheese, make sure you thank a dairy farmer or any farmer. God bless America and we'll see you next time.